Space, the final frontier, it's always intrigued and captivated us. And in 2017, a number of nations are lining up to explore the stars. Hello, I'm Mike Walter, and this is The Heat. Twenty sixteen was a watershed year for space exploration on both sides of the Pacific. The big push this year, the race to Mars. China and the United States both announced missions in twenty twenty. John Zarella has more on the fascination with the Red Planet. Mars, that gold ring in space, could be, with the advancement of technology, within the reach of human explorers. If you ask Buzz Aldrin, one of the twelve men who walked on the moon, the time is now. Let me put it this way. We have progressed in transportation as a human race. We've gone to the moon. We can go to Mars, right? It's going to take billions and billions of dollars internationally, together. Yes, it will take a rocket load of money and an international effort. No one nation can hope to go it alone. NASA, the U.S. Space Agency, is already laying the groundwork for what would likely be an international human expedition. NASA is building a mammoth rocket and a spacecraft called Orion. By 2035, explorers from Earth might put the first boot prints on Mars. And they'd likely be living in an expandable habitat, in essence, a lightweight blow-up living quarters. One designed by Bigelow Aerospace is being tested right now on the International Space Station. In the meantime, a fleet of robotic explorers from China, Russia, Europe, India, and the U.S. will search the Martian surface, looking for evidence of past life. And all that is just a tantalizing taste of the future. Elon Musk, founder of SpaceX, envisions massive spaceships carrying 100 or more people at a time, colonizing Mars before the end of the century. It's got to be really fun and exciting, um, and it can't feel cramped or, um, or boring. So uh, the, the, crew, the crew compartment or the occupant compartment is set up so that you can do zero-G games, you can float around. Uh, there'll be like movies, uh, lecture halls, um, you know, cabins, um, a restaurant. Now, if Mars was such an easy destination, humans would have been there by now. The furthest we've been is the moon, 400,000 kilometers away. It took a few days to get there. And Mars, at its closest point to Earth, about 58 million kilometers, at the very least, a six-month trip. But it may no longer be a question of if, but when. John Zarella at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Great work by John Zarella, who's joining us from Florida. Also with us from Beijing is Yang Yuguang. He is a professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. From Vienna, we are also joined by Jean-Jacques Tortora. He's director of the European Space Policy Institute. And with us here on the set is Thomas Jones. He's a four-time NASA Space Shuttle crew member. Jones actually helped complete the International Space Station, and I'd be remiss if I didn't start off by talking to you because I think all of us are space geeks. All, I can say our guests and myself look at space this way. You've had the opportunity to look the other way. How does a mission shape you? I mean, you've been out there in space. What's it like? Well, there are two big things that I bring back home from my four space trips. Uh, one was the, just the stupendous view of our planet, Mike. Uh, just brings tears to your eyes, the beauty of our Earth when you're a couple of hundred miles away from it. And uh, that never changes. It's always different. It's always uh, a, an interesting facet of the planet. And you get to explore it in a way few explorers in history have seen the Earth. Uh, the other thing that really struck me and surprised me was the teamwork that's involved in succeeding in space flight. And those friendships, the teams that we developed, uh, both with, with Mission Control, with our uh, cosmonaut friends in Russia and our international partners in the space station, those friendships uh, will bond you for life. And you, you come back to Earth with those bonds of friendship 
uh, that will last a long, long time. Together, uh, you can do amazing things. And I think that's the theme for Mars exploration is uh, we're only going to succeed if we can create a great team to take, carry us out there. Teamwork, cooperation, we're going to talk a lot about mm -hmm. that on this broadcast. But, but Professor Young, why don't I throw the next question in your direction? Because uh, 2016, a watershed year, really, for China. In fact, an amazing year. I want to give you a quote, start off with this. Uh, one of the top officials in the European Space Agency said this about China. Quote, China is developing very rapidly into one of the major space players. End of quote. Um, talk to me about 2016, how significant it was, how it sets the table for 2017 and beyond for China. Uh, well, you know, uh, 2016 is really a big year for China Aerospace. We performed so many missions, and uh, one of, uh, some of them are very important. For instance, the Long March 5 mission uh, make China uh, one of the uh, most capable nations in the uh, launch vehicle capabilities. And in the next year, in 2017, China will continue its uh, Tiangong 2 missions. This, uh, it will dock with the Tianzhou 1, which is the first cargo ship of China, uh, and to test the technology necessary for the future space station. And of course, next year, China China will also perform its Chang'e 5 mission, which will be a sample return mission, and we will bring the rock and the soils back from the moon. Uh, and also, uh, this year is a very uh, important year for the uh, future uh, preparation for the construction of China's future space station, and also uh, for the future potential uh, Mars robotic Mars missions in 2020. And also, China will continue its con construction of spa uh, its space infrastructure uh, for the uh, direct return uh, benefit of the national economy. And Jean Jacques, uh, let me kind of pick up on what Tom mentioned. Uh, you know, talking about the importance of what he saw up there, the awe-inspiring views, but also the teamwork, uh, the cooperation. There in the Eurozone, we're seeing examples of that. How does how does uh, how does it how is it viewed space exploration there? Well, first of all, I would say that uh, Europe has a, a long-established tradition of cooperation in space. And definitely, space exploration is the ideal framework to, uh, I would say, further develop uh, international collaboration. Because, as you rightly pointed out, the, the conquest of Mars and, and finding evidence of past life of Mars is definitely the most, uh, the most exciting challenge that uh, ahead of us. And, uh, and our, both the scientific community, but also the public, is really looking forward to knowing more about that. And Europe is definitely eager to play its role there. And uh, I would say in, in 2016, we had the, the successful uh, mission ExoMars, uh, which uh, has been uh, you know, successful in, in uh, placing into orbit the Trace Gas Orbiter. And despite the, the, the failure of the Skep early landing, which has absolutely no influence on the continuation of the programs, uh, European ministers uh, gathered earlier this month in the framework of the of the European Space Agency Council meeting, agreed on the continuation of the ExoMars uh, program, which is definitely a major contribution that Europe will make there. And John, uh, you kind of set the table with this piece, uh, kind of leading into the discussion. Uh, I remember talking to you just a few months back where you said, we're really kind of entering another golden age of space exploration. Talk to me about that and, and what you see as exciting out there. Well, I think certainly, you know, I preface this by age. saying I, I do believe that humans are going to go to Mars. There's no question about it, Mike. But, you know, there's three pillars, and I think Mars is that gold ring out there in the distance, and that's the destination everybody wants to get to. Sure, the moon is there, and the Chinese, I believe, will probably go to the moon uh, maybe before the U.S. goes back. But there's three pillars of Mars exploration. You've got to have the will. You've got to have the technology, and you've got to pay the cost. Some $300 billion is the estimate, billion, for a Mars mission. The technology, you've got to have uh, shield radiation shielding for the crews. You've got to have a lander. You've got to have an ascent vehicle. And then the will to go. Uh, I just don't believe that you can get by any longer. Maybe Tom Jones would have some insights into this, but just saying, well, it's there. That's why humans have to go. It's our destiny to go. Yeah, but it's not that easy when it's $300 billion price tag. 
So when you're going to do it, it is going to be an international effort. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Uh, the spacefaring nations are all going to have to chip in to do it. But that will be the gold ring out there, far more so than the moon or moon bases, because for the U.S., it's, un, it's, it's a tough sell, the moon, because it's one of those, I've, we've been there, we've done that. Why do we need to go back? So, Tom, let me, let me pick up on that, because he, he threw it in your direction. He, the three pillars, will, technology, cost, of the three, which one's the most important? Well, I think the, the you've got to have, in our political set, has over many presidential administrations, many Congresses. That's a tough order. He got in 10 years because he knew he could get it done in two terms that uh, he was going to, um, to serve through. And he made it to the, you know, it's going to be a very tough, tougher challenge to uh, get a U.S. political commitment over that time. He led international commitment. And together, you've got then uh, all those interests that can't withdraw and you can't pull out of the broad people. It seems to me that China really, in many respects, don't they? Uh, well, China, because China is still uh, 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 developing the technologies, promoting its science and research level, and also benefits the national economy and also uh, progress of the society. This is a major task. Uh, but you know that uh, because the uh, uh, human space flight and deep space uh, explorations are very important uh, and very efficient to promote its uh, level in space uh, technology in this field, so it is also very important for China to, to develop its uh, future uh, uh, lunar, uh, lunar explorations and uh, Mars explorations, but first China will perform a robotic mission, uh, mission for uh, for these celestial bodies. And if, in the future, uh, because you know that uh, for United States, uh, it can have its uh, human uh, missions to Mars directly because it has already visited the moon. But for other countries, as I mentioned before, for China, Russia, Europe, and Japan, we should go to the moon first to test and demonstrate uh, demonstrate the necessary technologies. So uh, the next step for China's uh, potential human missions uh, after its uh, future space station program, uh, the first choice, I believe, is to go to the moon. And of course, uh, if we can have international cooperation in the future, it can uh, save uh, much of the money uh, for, uh, for the uh, uh, human lunar missions and also uh, make it more easy to uh, decision makers to choose these uh, projects. And Jean-Jacques, uh, let, me, let me throw a question in your direction, because obviously EESA, uh, cooperation, very important there. What are some lessons learned along the way? Because it's tough to put all these players together and work collectively, isn't it? Yes, it is. And uh, I can only uh, concur to the, what was said regarding the political uh, challenge ahead of us to make it internationally, because it can only be made internationally, given the huge investment uh, requested. But uh, I would also like to, to remind that there are still ahead of us some technical challenges. And, uh, and definitely how we are going to get there is, is not, um, I would say, definitely, definitively set uh, at the moment. And and, um, and f pr probably that uh, the next logical step before getting to Mars is, is certainly to uh, to uh, to get back to the moon uh, for with uh, for, for instance a permanent settlement and the the, the the director general of the European Space Agency made a very interesting proposal in this direction and then from the moon you can get access to Mars uh, in a much uh, cheaper and much convenient uh, manner so uh, I, I I would like just to uh, to second what was uh, said by uh, our Chinese uh, friend that uh, certainly the next logical step is the moon, and, and we should start thinking about how to get there collectively.